What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. I'm going to tell you a story that's a little different from the ones you've been seeing. I call it Beauty for Hire. It first came to my attention one day when Tolliver of Missing Persons called me to say that he was dropping something pretty interesting into my lap. She was interesting, if you like the cyclonic type. Captain Braddock? Oh, hello. Won't you be seated? I'll be with you in just a moment. What is it with you guys down here? Everyone wants me to sit down. Well, poor little Franny's probably looking for a high bridge with a long drop. I don't feel like sitting down. Well, just you try it anyway, young lady. Here, and try this, too. Now, what's it all about? It's about my roommate. She's disappeared, and I'm afraid she might do something foolish, and it'll be all my fault. What's your roommate's name? Francis Dillon. Captain Tolliver just called me about that. Oh, yes, Francis married Dillon, 19, brunette, brown eyes, 5 feet 2, 105 pounds, missing since last night. Now, where does the racket squad fit into this, Miss? Blake, Evie Blake. You've got to help get her money back for her, Captain. Almost a thousand dollars those chiselers took her for. Seventeen hundred, if you count. Just a minute, Miss Blake. Suppose we start at the beginning. Well, it began when I saw this ad in a newspaper. Me and my big bright eyes. Giant photo contest. Free, free, free. Send snapshot and win complete set of studio portraits. No jingles, no box tops, no entrance fee. You open to girls between 18 and 30, address entrance to models, unlimited, etc., etc., etc. I talked Franny into sending in a snapshot. We forgot all about it. And then one morning, a couple of months ago, while we were getting ready to go to work... Models Unlimited. For contest. You, you open it. You got me into this. For what contest? Snapshot contest. Evie made me enter. They're probably sending my picture back. Sending it back my foot? You won. No. Listen to this. My dear Miss Dillon, it gives us the greatest of pleasure to inform you that your picture has been chosen as a winner in our snapshot contest. Please call us for your absolutely free prize portrait appointment. What'd I tell you? Gosh. I won. You know, once at bank night, I won a, a brand new muff bucket with an automatic squeezer. How grand for you. I've been wanting a good picture to send to Mike. They'll fix you up. Hello? Models Unlimited. Wait a moment, please. This is Frances Dillon. I received a letter from you at... <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, any time you say. Five o'clock this afternoon. That'll be fine. You girls weren't making coffee in here by any chance, were you? Coffee? We thought that was against the rules. Go get the pot out of the dresser drawer and we'll all have a cup. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> And uh, what can I do for you, charming ladies? My name is Frances Dillon. Frances Dillon, of course. Well, Loretta, uh, Loretta Wayne, that is, our guiding light. She was most anxious to see you the moment that you arrived. Miss Dillon, do you know that your snapshots made quite an impression upon our boss lady? <laughs> Usually, she's the coldest fish this side of Alaska. But I have never heard anyone rave like she did about you. Oh, won't you please be seated, ladies? Yes? Loretta there, Roger here. Roger, I told you not to disturb me unless it was important. 
Oh, but it is thou. Miss Dillon is here. Oh, send her. No, I'll come right out there. You see? The mountain hot puts it to Mohammed. <laughs> Loretta, this is our little contest winner, Mr. Dillon and Mr. Blake. How do you do? Would you stand up, dear, and turn around? Yes, we most certainly could do something with you, young lady. I, I brought some things. I thought maybe that I... You won't need them now. Miss Dillon, have you ever thought of being a model? A professional model? Oh, no. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Why not? For Annie, are you crazy? She just offered you a job as a model. Do you want to hop cars and a drive-in for the rest of your life? Perhaps you don't realize just how much a successful model makes. How much do successful models make? $500 a week isn't at all unusual. I had no idea that they made that much money. It's an extremely well-paid field. We have a few girls at Models Unlimited who average almost twice that. I think I'd like Bruce to devote a week to Miss Dillon. Mm -hmm. You'll love Bruce. He's mean as a bear with a sore paw, but he takes pictures like an angel. A week to have my picture taken? If it's worth doing at all, it's worth doing well. But I couldn't take a week off. I work. I suggest you quit. I couldn't do that. Sure she could. I can't. How would I live? Certainly you have some money. She has almost a thousand dollars. Seems to me you can manage very nicely on that. It isn't all mine. Not all yours. Well, it's a, it's a joint account. Her boyfriend sends her money from Korea. I couldn't touch it. On something you should know, Miss Wayne. I'm engaged to a boy, Mike O'Brien. The minute his foot touches that dock, I'm going to marry him so fast it'll make his head swim. How soon do you expect your fiancé back? Thirteen months and a little bit. Oh, well, let's not worry about that for thirteen months and a little bit. This is Bruce, our photographer, and Joe Kane, our demon press agent. Pleased to meet you. Oh. This is Franny Dillon. I'm thinking of taking her on. All right, honey, strut for the gentleman. Get up, four second four. That's right. All right, Snap Judgment. What's your opinion? In two words, sensational. Bruce. Still a little baby fat. We can get rid of that in short order. The bone structure's there, don't you think? Good bones. This one I can photograph. You agree that we should take her. What else? In six months, she'll be on the cover of every magazine in the country. She's got a chance. All right, that's settled. Bruce, keep tomorrow morning open for Franny. And, Joe, I want you to start a little campaign on Franny. See that she gets in a couple of the better columns. Keep it dignified. Since when ain't I been dignified? All right, scat you two. <laughs> well, what do you say? Well, I don't know what to say. I came in here just to have my picture taken. And now... You're on your way to becoming a famous model. And now for the sort of detail. Do you have a contract form handy, Pet? Yes, sir. Naturally, you realize you don't become a model simply by signing this paper. We have to groom you, to train you. We work on you like a show horse, and it's hard work and expensive for us. Most of the expense of your training, I intend to bear myself. To guarantee that all our time and expense won't go for nothing, it's usual for the model to write a little check, a binder. How much would you need? It'll take about $2,500. I usually ask for $500. But in your case, I think $350 will be plenty. Well, I didn't bring my checkbook along. You see, I had no idea. Roger, I... Franny needs a blank check. I have. I'll scribble your name on the agency contract while you still got the pen. After the hook was firmly planted, then came the razzle-dazzle. Portraits were taken, for which she would be charged later. Sometimes there would be a session in the gymnasium, but nothing that couldn't have been gotten at home in front of the radio. Of course, at home, she wouldn't have gotten that cute little gym suit. Twelve dollars extra. Almost every day, Franny was sent out on actual modeling calls for just the experience.
I always knew I was no raven beauty. But you're the first doll that ever busted out crying at the sight of me. I saw your hat in the hall. I thought... You thought it was Mike. I'm sorry, honey. It's all right. I know he's not due back for over a year. I guess I'm just tired. This is Sergeant McGurn. Gunner, tuck in your eyes and say hello to Franny Dillon. <laughs> Hi. Her fiancé is a buddy of yours, so be careful. Well, any fiancé of my buddies is a fiancé of mine. Put her there. <laughs> we'll be out of here in five minutes. You can take a nice warm bath and clap. Oh, oh, I wish I could. I've got a television show to do. When? I should be on my way right now. Well, we'll walk around the block while you dress. Forward march, Semper Fidelis. Okay, Captain. Well, I hope you're getting paid this time. They still tell me I'm doing it for the experience. Well, how much experience can a girl get? I don't know. Would you like to wear it as a cape or an Inverness? Come on. For the latest of comfort and styling, it's Sea Maiden every time. Why be satisfied with second best when Sea Maiden has a suit that suits you? And now, peeps, we nail the lid down on Dan Dunaway's open house. Till tomorrow at this time. See you then. Dylan. Yes? My name is Dow, Jimmy Dow. <laughs> You've never heard of me. Do you have a second? Well... Uh, the minute I see one goose pimple, I'll let you go. Scott's on it. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Dow? Oh, may I be frank? All right, here it is. Loretta Wayne and that bunch of hers are taking you over the hurdles, and I hate to see it. I don't understand. Well, it's simple. Sea Maiden pays Loretta, and Loretta doesn't pay you. Who are you, Mr. Dow? What do you do? Well, among other things, I handle a very few top-flight models. I'd like very much to buy your contract from Loretta if you'd be interested in coming with me. I don't promise the moon on a silver platter. I just promise that I'll get work for you, that you'll get paid. What do you think? I don't know. I'll have to think it over. Now, listen... That, Mr. Dow, is a goose pimple. <laughs> All right. Get dressed and we'll go somewhere and talk. I have to get home. I have some friends waiting for me. Well, call them up. Tell them to come along as my guest. Oh, please, Miss Dillon. I'm very sincere about this. All right. Good. I'll wait for you. How's business, Paul? I think someone hung a quarantine sign on the door. We need an attraction. I think I have one. I'll tell you about it later. What would you like? Coffee. If you think I'm old enough, beer. You're only young once. Make it a pair. And a brandy. Did I hear you say you own this place? I wish I could tell you you were wrong. I thought you said you handled models. Only a very few special models. I'd like you to be one of them. If you like talking business. You talk. She'll listen. All right. Well, first thing we have to do is to get a contract back from Loretta. It'll probably cost a lot more than you have, so I'm willing to put up the balance as a loan. I just can't go into debt any further. Well, if I don't get jobs for you, you don't have to pay me back one red cent. You mean she pays back the loan out of the jobs you get her, right? That's right. Well, what do you say? I just can't believe that Miss Wayne isn't honest. If I could prove to you what I say about Models Unlimited, would you consider signing with me? Yes, I think so. That's all I wanted to hear. Mr. Dunaway's here. Oh, good. Hiya, Jimmy. Hi, Dan. Thanks for dropping over. Sit down, meet the folks. Hiya, thieves. Hello. What's on your mind, Jim? Well, what did the model in the Sea Breeze ad get tonight? Well, the usual, fit to fish. I sent the check to Models Unlimited this afternoon. Did you get paid? Not so you should notice it. Tomorrow, I'll call that Wayne up and lower the boom on it. Don't bother. I'll take care of that little matter myself. If it's all right with you, Miss Teller. It's all right with me, Mr. Dow. And they call me Franny. Absolutely not. This contract will stand up in any court in the country. I'm holding her to it. We've spent time, money, and energy on this girl. And if you think you're going to move in now, you're crazy. The doctor said they were fine. What? My ears, I just had them checked. Stop shouting. Stop shouting, he tells me. He comes in here and tries to grab one of our girls right from under our noses and then has a the nerve to tell me to stop shouting. How do you feel about this? I hope you're proud of yourself after all the effort we've put out for you. I've given you almost $700, Miss Wayne. $700? Young lady, I took you out of a hamburger stand. I took a gawky, clumsy young ox. You took her, period. Now she wants out. How about it? 
Fine. $1,000, and you can have the contract. $1,000? Where am I going to get $1,000? How much have you got, Franny? 200 and something. Write her a check for 200 Oh, no, you don't. 1000 is the price. I'm giving you my personal check for $800 to cover the balance. Write it. Get a relief. Don't worry, you're doing the right thing. I don't know how or when I can ever pay you back. Just let me worry about that. Here you are. There's your release. Thank you. Thank you for nothing. Let's go. Uh, wait for me in the car, will you? There are a few things I want to say to these chiselers not suitable for childish ears. Oh, look, there's been enough unpleasantness. Not quite. Forget something? Yeah, my check. I was just about to tear it up. I'll save you the trouble. <laughs> After Loretta's wonderful performance, you should let her keep your check. You've got your 200. And you've got your big-eyed redhead. Come back and see us again. Don't worry, I'll be back the first of the month to check the books. It's grand to have a partner who trusts you. Well, in five minutes, there'll be another little contest winner here. Places everyone. He's a very smooth article, that Jimmy Dow. Somehow, he makes even me feel a little bit dirty. And that, my dear, is the neatest trick of the week. What's that? Just something I whipped up out of an old shower curtain. On me, it doesn't look so good. But on Franny. Oh, it's beautiful. Don't bother to try it on. If it's a present, you can't keep it. And if it isn't, you can't afford it. <laughs> I was afraid of that. Actually, the dress is just a dirty, underhanded trick to soften your hearts. What for? Yeah, for what? Well, I want Franny to take a job down at the club for a couple of weeks as a hostess. The tips are pretty good, enough to live on. And instead of salary, I could cut $50 a week off the 800 you owe me. What do you say? Just what does a hostess do? Well, just look pretty mainly, help seat the customers, see that everybody's having a good time. I don't know. I don't Look, honey, I... I've got a lot of money tied up in your contract. Besides, it's just until you click as a model. I guess it's all right. When do I go to work? Just as soon as you can get into this new dress. <laughs> I won't be a minute. Oh, and uh, wear some shoes that are comfortable to dance in. You like to dance, don't you? Uh-huh. Good. I'll tell you who I am. I'm a no grade timber wolf. You want to hear me howl? Listen. White Fang, break clean. Evie, what are you doing here? I'm the sheriff's posse. I always arrive in the nick of time. Wait a minute, who are you? Her mother. Time to go home, dearie. And I'm her grandmother. I never get to have any fun. So, from where I sat, it looked like a hostess at the Razzmatazz Club was only a bee girl in disguise. We couldn't figure out why Jimmy couldn't get her a decent job modeling if he was such a high-powered agent. So what happened? Well, it's your story. Well, a couple of weeks later, that cheap chiseler came up with a real gimmick. A little innovation for his club. He wants Franny to pose for amateur photographers. Calendar R, he called it. One of those things where they rent cameras to the customers, sell them film, and supply the model in return for a stiff cover charge. After all, she owed the guy 700 bucks. Well, we figured it was a chance to get her off the cuff. Then what happened? Franny's BF gets some unexpected leave and shows up in town. Naturally, he wants to see her, so we go down to the club. I, uh, guess he didn't like what he saw. Whether it was the costume or the way the cash customers were pushing Franny around. Anyhow, the wolves were yelling at her. Smile pretty. Now I ask you, there she was, looking down at her boyfriend, who was about to blow his beret. How are you going to smile at a time like that? Mike didn't care much for a crack one of the shutterbugs made and gave him a slight poke in the eye. Then things started to happen. 
And when that knuckle-headed BF of mine yelled, Gung Ho! You want to play? And before they could carry out the body, the cops came in. Jimmy Dow accused Mike and Gunner of starting it, and they wound up in jail on a charge of disturbing the peace. While I was down trying to get them out, Franny went home and packed a couple of bags and disappeared. Does that bring you up to date? I think I follow your story, all right. Then what are you going to do about Franny? I think missing persons can handle that end of the case. However, there are a few angles of your story that my department might be very much interested in. Suppose I have your Marine friends released in my custody and we go over to this razzmatazz club, huh? Okay, but you better put handcuffs on those two guys if that maitre d's on the job. Well, it looks like business as usual. Yeah, but with a new model, that's not Franny. Wait here, I may need you in a minute. Good evening, gentlemen. What's the rumble? I'm looking for the owner. Well, help yourself. If you've got a warrant, I'll take it. I own this trap. Fine, you're under arrest. For what? What's the charge? Well, for one thing, employing a minor, Francis Dillon, in a place where alcoholic beverages are sold. You think you can make that stick? We'll try. Maybe we can dig up a few other charges just to make it worth our while. All right, let's go. All right, we could go now. It's a pleasure. Oh, wait a minute. I know that guy. Recognize him? Yeah, that's the guy that put the lump on my head. Come on. Just a minute, Captain. We're not all present and accounted for. Well, sounds like the Marines have landed. Yeah, wouldn't you think they'd get enough of that stuff in Korea? Take him down to the car. Since when is it against the law to take a bus out of town? Franny, now listen. I don't like the idea of being arrested. Forget about that. Evie and Gunner told me the whole story. I'm sorry I acted like such a heel. Oh, you didn't either. You were perfectly right. I was wrong. Uh-uh. I was wrong. No, I was. We had enough on Jimmy Dow to get a conviction and close the Razzmatazz Club. The same applies to Loretta Wayne and her agency. There are hundreds of absolutely legitimate model schools and agencies all over the country. Loretta Wayne's outfit was a rare exception, but a vicious one as Franny could have found out had she checked carefully. The model school and agency with nothing to fear welcomes your inquiries. This postcard closed the case for me. Mike and Franny found time to send it while they were on their honeymoon. A honeymoon Franny almost missed because she was taken in by a smooth operator. Don't blame it too much. It happens every day. It could happen to you. Losing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you.